Welcome back to Crime 4 News Weekend. Tolstoy, Van Gogh, Nietzsche, Pollock. Do you have to be crazy to be a successful artist? For that matter, does it help to be crazy just in life in general? A uh, book called Standing at Water's Edge by Dr. Anne Paris. She is a psychologist. There we go, now you can see it. Uh, she is a psychologist, and she has worked with artists extensively in trying to help them overcome the blocks to creativity. But this is something that applies to everybody, whether you're trying to do your taxes or trying to write the great American novel. So, Anne, thank you very much for joining us. Um, Standing at Water's Edge is the title. So what does a beach have to do <laughs> with improving your creativity? Well, I, I uh, came up with that title as I was working on this book and found that uh, every time I'd sit down to work on it and write uh, that I really felt like I was standing at the edge of a cliff and needing to dive into this into this creative state. And um, so I kept having that image of standing at Water's Edge. Yeah. Um, so many of us have that when we set out to do things. I mean, you know, I sit, when I sit down to write, uh, it, you know, it's, just, it's scary. It really is. Um, and anybody who's ever tried to paint or anybody who's tried to come up with a business plan, yes. uh, you know, or, or, or even plan a menu, th these can all be significant obstacles for people. What, it, what are we scared of anyway? I think that the creative process and much of our life involves uh, really investing ourselves into the unknown and we don't know what's going to come out. We don't know if anything's going to come out. Uh, so it can be terrifying as well as uh, really exciting and, and we can experience both of those feelings at once. Uh, often we, we procrastinate and, and find all, everything else in the world to do but, but the writing or whatever we're trying to do. Uh, so I think that uh, really understanding in a deeper level these le types of fears is important to help us move past that. Right. Uh, and, and the book goes into, into quite a lot of detail on the many levels of elements that can cause this. There's no one answer, obviously. Everyone's got their own sure. little crazinesses. Uh, <laughs> much you know, Family, it, it has to do a lot with other people as well. Yes. But ironically, other people are where you suggest people go to help themselves be individually creative. Yes. I think, you know, that, that it's a big shift in the way that we understand ourselves, uh, that our culture has taught us to, you know, be independent and be autonomous and self-sufficient, and that if we're strong enough, we can dig deep into ourself to find the, that, that motivation and that discipline. Uh, but um, recent, recent theory and, and some really cool neuroscience research is showing us that that's really not the case. We get our strength, we get our inspiration and our comfort in our relationships with other people. But just, just speaking for myself because it's easier that way, uh, so if I want to sit down and write, I need to be alone. I don't, yes. I, don't, I don't want other people around distracting me, even if they're not doing anything. Right, right. And, and I think that, you know, for most people that is the case, that, that we do need to be solitary to, to do this kind of immersive work. Um, but I think that in the context of our lives, that, that if we have people that are supportive, that appreciate us, understand us, uh, that that we use the strength we gain from those relationships. Okay, just a little role play. This is not planned, but you know, little role plays. Boy, you know, I'm really, I'm having such a tough time, you know, getting the, getting any writing done. I, I need you to help me somehow do that. But what do I ask for? What am I? What am I? What am I trying to get? Mm. Well, obviously, I, it depends I, on our relationship. But. <laughs> I know that I know that in my writing, I would need and ask for people for positive feedback. Can you tell me what you like about what I've done? Can you, uh, and and then and then you can you know give me some constructive criticism. But but I think first to feel appreciated for what you're doing and what your efforts are, um, and that there are really three kinds of relationships that bolster us. One are mirrors, and that that. that that would be people who see our talents and uh, see our efforts and, and give us that kind of support. That gives us confidence. Uh, heroes are people we look up to and admire, and they can really inspire us to reach past our comfort zones. And then twins are people who are doing the same thing, and then they're in the same boat, feeling the same kinds of fears and doubts, and we get a lot of comfort and understanding from those people. It's tough when you can't find anybody to 
g give you anything positive to say, but <laughs> I mean, you need to find that support system. Though. Yes, and, and in the absence of a real support system, I think we can imagine it and that we can get a lot of strength from that too, imagining the applause. Thank you, Ann Paris. The book is Standing at Water's Edge, Moving Past Fear, Blocks and Pitfalls to Discover the Power of Creative Immersion. And uh, you can meet Ann. She's going to be at Book Passage in Corta Madera today at 1 p.m. For more information, well, you can go to annparis.com. That's Ann with an E, by the way. Uh, is, your, is your appearance listed, the information on the Corte Madera? Uh, uh, yes, it, it is. It's it is at 1 o'clock today. Great. Yes. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm feeling more creative already. Marty, how about you? I'm feeling much more creative and, and even awake. <laughs> <laughs>